take up the next situation when the volume of body fluid decreases. So this is situation second when volume of body fluid decreases. Now what are those situations when the volume of body fluid mainly blood would decrease? The situations could be there is excessive blood loss, excessive blood loss. Another situation could be profuse sweating. During certain vigorous activities or exercises and third situation could be less fluid intake, less water intake. In these situations, the water which is coming into the body is less and that would result in decrease in the volume of blood fluid. So this is our situation two and we want to understand how the kidneys would absorb more and more water and eliminate less and less and this would result in elimination of hypertonic urine. So here the kidneys would absorb more and more water or would help in absorption of water. Now this type of osmoregulation takes place by different methods. The first by changing ultrafiltration. Here, ultrafiltration would be reduced by decreasing ultrafiltration. Now, what exactly happens in ultrafiltration is the blood coming in from afferent arterial gets filtered through glomerulus. In this case, when the blood volume is less, then the wall of afferent arteriole would constrict. This is called myogenic control. Myogenic control. In this, the wall of afferent arteriole constrict. And when the walls constrict, there would be less blood coming into the glomerulus and glomerular filtration rate would be lower and if filtration is less there would be less nephric filtrate formed and if filtrate is less then less is going to be eliminated along with urine there would be less water which is going to be lost so this is one method by which more and more water is retained in the body and less and less gets eliminated along with urine. So here also the urine is going to be hypertonic or more concentrated. The second method by which this can work is ADH by increasing the release of ADH. Increasing release of antidiuretic hormone from the posterior lobe of pituitary. When blood volume decreases, this less blood volume is responsible to stimulate increased ADH release from posterior pituitary. And when ADH is released, we know ADH is responsible for increasing the permeability of distal convoluted tubule and collecting that. So, increased reabsorption of water from DCT and collecting duct. If more and more water gets absorbed, less and less would be eliminated. So, there would be hypertonic urine formation. So, by altering the ultrafiltration or by changing the release of ADH, here it is increase ADH so that more and more water can be absorbed from 
the collecting duct as DCT. This is the second mechanism. The third mechanism is known as RAAS. The full form is renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This renin angiotensin aldosterone system is responsible again for absorption of more and more water and secretion of hypertonic urine. This system was given by Tiger Stan and Bergman in 1898. This system is working on many things. There is an enzyme renin, then there is a protein, plasma protein, which is called angiotensinogen, which gets converted into angiotensin, stimulation of secretion of aldosterone. So this is a complicated thing. But before this, we need to understand one more very important thing, and that is juxtaglomerular apparatus, because one cell of this apparatus is responsible for formation of this or secretion of this enzyme renin. So we will first talk about juxtaglomerular apparatus and then we will take the system in detail. So let us now talk about this juxtaglomerular apparatus. This juxtaglomerular apparatus, it is very close to glomerulus. Juxta means next to. So something which is very close to glomerulus, that is why it is known as juxtaglomerular apparatus. It is made up of three different types of cells. Three types of cells. First, macula densa. Macula densa cells are located in DCT, distal convoluted tubule. Second type of cells are known as juxtaglomerular cells. Here we are talking of cells and here we have written the term apparatus. So here when we talk of juxtaglomerular cells, these are modified smooth muscles, modified smooth muscle cells of afferent arteriole. The tunica media of the afferent arteriole has the smooth muscle cells and some smooth muscle cells are modified into these specialized cells. So they are modified smooth muscle cells of afferent arteriole especially of tunica media and they have or they store renin. These are the cells which store renin and this is that enzyme which is helping or which is going to help in RAAS that is renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The third type of cells, these cells their function is not clearly uh, understood, but these are known as mesangial cells. Mesangial cells. Now, if we have to have an idea how this apparatus is, we'll quickly draw a simple diagram to understand. This is the Bowman's capsule. The afferent arterio, which is bringing the blood in, and this arteriole divides into a set of capillaries, which we call the glomerulus. These capillaries rejoin, and the efferent arterio leaves. Now, when we draw or when we see the complete structure of nephron, all the tubes are very close to each other. 
So a part of DCT, it comes here. So when we see the DCT gets cut in this region, it is very close because when we draw the complete nephron, the Bowman's capsules are like this. This is PCT, the loop of Henle and DCT. These things come very close to each other. That is why the distal convoluted tubule is very close. And here are those macula densa cells. So these are the cells that we are talking of. This is one type that is macula densa type of cells. That is this macula densa which we said is in DCT. That is distal convoluted tubule in DCT. Then next one, juxtaglomerular, as the name tells us, very close to glomerulus. They are on afferent arteriole. So here, tunica media would have these cells. And few of these cells are also found on efferent. But the maximum number is on afferent arteriole. So this is, or let me like label it like this. This is afferent arteriole and this duct is actually efferent arteriole and these cells which we have drawn and their number is more on the afferent arteriole. We have drawn it above it but they are in the muscular layer. These are juxtaglomerular cells and they are mainly on Afferent that is in the tunica media of afferent arterial but very few in the efferent also. And the third type of cells that is mesangial cells. These cells are located here in between. So these cells are mesangial cells and we don't know their function actually in detail. It is not completely understood yet. This complete structure which is made up of macula densa, juxtaglomerular cells and these mesangial cells. This together makes the glomerular apparatus. Out of this one cell, these that is juxtaglomerular cells, they help in RAAS that is renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system for osmoregulation. So now... In the next part, we will take up RAAS in detail.